How's everybody doing? After my last few videos, several people have commented something along the lines of, I'm glad you're back to covering current news. I just want to say that this channel covers everything. But what some people may not fully understand is, in order to comprehend the present, you must acknowledge the past. So without further ado, I'm going to be speaking about Giacomo Riina, uncle to the infamous Toto Riina. <laughs> Giacomo Orina had close ties to Luciano Ligio and fought alongside him during the First Mafia War in the early 60s. Both men were arrested in May of 1964 in connection to that war, and they were tried in both Palamo, Sicily, and Bari, but by 1969 they were acquitted. By this time, Ligio was considered the boss of Corleone after killing his former boss, Michele Navarra, in August of 1958. It turns out that besides his criminal connection to Ligio, there was a family bond. Giacomo was married to Maria Conchetta Ligio, a relative of Luciano. And at times, he managed the Ligio family farm and business in Bologna. Giacomo masqueraded himself as an accountant for Eminflex, the largest manufacturer of mattresses in Italy. After the acquittals, Luciano Ligio went to Milan. At the same time, Totorina and Bernardo Provenzano went into hiding. And Giacomo went to Brugio in Bologna. Once he was settled, he showed up for his mandatory visits punctually at the local Carabinieri office, and he did so with his wife. A little fact about Budrio, it's a region known for having the highest percentages of Ferraris in all Italy. It's also an area known for trafficking drugs and weapons, as well as supplying shelter to fugitives. In the early 70s, Giuseppe Russo, a colonel with the Carabinieri, was investigating a series of kidnappings that were linked to Luciano Ligio. At some point, he arrested Leo Luca Bagarella, a brother-in-law of Totorina. It turns out that the ransom payments were processed through several companies that were registered to Giuseppe Mandelari, who was a Freemason accountant and a trusted friend of Totorina. On August 20th, 1977, Colonel Russo and a friend were walking in the Colleone Square when they were fired upon and killed. Two out of those four shooters was Leo Luca Bagarella and Giovanni Brusca. After Russo's murder, the police raided Giacomo's house in search of his nephew, Totorina, and Begarella, who they believed were responsible for the murder. They came up empty-handed, but documents seized during the raid confirmed Giacomo had been in correspondence with high-ranking members of the Sicilian Mafia. In 1979, Paolo Borsellino, the Palamo prosecuting judge, took Giacomo in for questioning. And on April 15, 1980, Borsellino and a captain of the Carabinieri, Emmanuel Bazil, traveled to Bologna to question Giacomo again. They found him in a local piazza near his home. Bazil searched Giacomo's apartment and discovered banking records and checks that were tied to known drug traffickers. This all took place during the height of the Colleonese's push for power in Palermo. They took Giacomo back to Palermo to further question him. They also took a Giuseppe Ligio, who was a relative of Luciano. Bazil wanted to ask him about a photograph found during a raid of a hideout used by Leo Luca Bagarella. In the photo was a group of smiling men. They were identified as Antonino Gioia, Giuliano and Andrea Di Carlo. Giacomo was also in the photo, along with someone they had never seen before. He was a distinguished-looking gentleman with white hair. Naturally, although he was in the picture, Giacomo claimed he didn't know any of the other people. The mystery man in the photo with the white hair was later identified as Lorenzo Nuvelletta, the boss of the Camorra in Naples. According to the testimony of collaborators, Totorina and Lorenzo Nuvelletta had a very close relationship, and the Colleonesi were at home in Montesanto, Naples, where Nuvelletta had an estate. The following month, on May 4, 1980, Captain Bazile was carrying his four-year-old daughter Barbara after enjoying a religious festival that included fireworks when three men approached shooting him in the back and killing him. Thankfully, his daughter was uninjured. This is a perfect example of the difference between Sicilian and American Cosa Nostra. The Sicilians just don't care. The shooter was identified as Giuseppe Madonia, and with him was Vincenzo Puccio and Armando Banano. Puccio would later be piped to death in prison. Giacomo was arrested again in early 1982 on orders of the deputy prosecutor Giacomo Siaccio Montalto. The prosecutor accused Giacomo of being involved with the murder of two mafia members in Trapani. But after being questioned, he was released. At the time, Prosecutor Montalto was investigating a heroin refinery. 
the largest one found in Europe. And he was tracking the extremely large amounts of money made from that refinery. But that investigation came to a halt on January 25th, 1983. Prosecutor Montalto, after arriving home late one night, was killed by a hail of bullets. He was the first prosecutor killed by the mafia, but there was more to come. Giacomo Riena would eventually be convicted during the famous Maxi trial, where he received seven and a half years. Ironically, he told a friend and former business partner, Cesare Polifroni, who was described as a big shot in the Turin and Draga, and told him that the mafia got to Claudio Martelli, who was running for the Minister of Justice. And during the elections before the Maxi trial, Martelli was told that he would benefit from mafia votes in exchange for favors at the trial. Subsequently, the mafia helped him get elected as Minister of Justice. And Martelli held up his end of the bargain by sentencing some mafia members to hospital arrest instead of prison. In this picture, Martelli is with Giovanni Falcone. Giacomo Riena would be chauffeured around by a young guy who everyone nicknamed Bao because he ceremoniously bowed every time he opened the door for him. Investigators considered Giacomo the brains of the Colonnesi. He's believed to have controlled Milan and the Colonnesi's northern Italy regions. It's been reported that he supervised the balance of power within the mafia families. Supposedly, members never took initiatives without prior approval from him. For example, the families in Tuscany and Catania operated under his guidance as he represented the Colonnesi. During that time, he was known to handle all mafia activities. He protected fugitives, traded drugs with Turkey, exchanged weapons with Croatia, and dealt in counterfeit money and explosives. Above all, Jaco Rodina sat back and watched the deaths of his enemies, which included Colonel Giuseppe Russo, Captain Emmanuel Bizil, Prosecutor Giacomo Siaccio Montalto, and Prosecuting Judges Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino all of who stood in his way. I hope you enjoyed the history in this video. Please remember to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you could do that as well. If you think friends and family might enjoy this video, please share it and thank you. Again, you can find Ratchet's website down in the description. Continue leaving your comments. They're much appreciated. And I wish everyone a good day and I'll catch you on the next one. You can subscribe to the Sit Down News blog at sitdownnews.com and I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. Well, just another example in the mob you never knew about.